Welcome back to Oak Haven. Uh, when Julie and I were studying botany, uh, getting our degree 40 years ago, uh, there were not a lot of classes on actual practical how to manage natural areas, uh, tools and tricks and techniques and things like that. So most of what we've picked up, it's been trial and error over the years. And we wanted to share some of that uh, through a series of videos talking about maybe some of the tools that we use. The tool that we're going to talk about today is a sprayer that we've modified for using as a, what I'm going to call a, a wick applicator. It's a way to apply the herbicide to a cut stem. So we're out cutting honeysuckle or burning bush or autumn olive or something like that and we either cut a, a trunk or smaller stems and we want to treat that um, with herbicide so it doesn't re-sprout. What we use is a 20% glyphosate solution. We buy our glyphosate in a 40% solution. We cut it in about half for a 20% solution, we add a, a, a colorant to it, an indicator dye so that we can see what we're doing, and then we want to treat that around the, the cambium layer, which would, uh, uh, the cambium and the phloem, that's where the cells are that uh, the plant uh, uses to transport uh, uh, sugars and food down to the roots. So the goal is that we want to uh, put the herbicide in that area so that it gets transported down to the roots and it kills it off so that we don't have to worry about re-sprouts. What we've done in the past is we've done tried several things. A lot of people will use a, a sprayer. This is just a cheap sprayer that you fill up with the solution and you cut the stem and you spray it. Uh, this works really well for like multi-stem trunks like um, multi-flora rose where you've got a lot of little stems. It covers that but, but it uh, there's a lot of drift when you spray it. It aerosols it, so it's up in the air, it can drift around. I have a lot of respect for herbicides. I feel like herbicides are an important tool. We use them a lot, but I feel like we need to, to use them in a way that's controlled. We need to use them in a way where the herbicide is targeted just to our target species and not getting off onto other things, not getting up into the air. I'm not breathing it, I'm not getting it under my skin, things like that. So this is our solution to that. Uh, this does, it, it works okay, but it does aerosol it a little bit. It tends to leak, so I, it then tends to get on my hands, so I always have to wear rubber gloves when I'm using it. It's, it's kind of hard to do. The other thing that we've done uh, is I've had a, just a small little bucket that I made from a, an apple juice container with a wire on it that I would hook up to my belt, and then I've got a paintbrush uh, duct tape to a stick where I can paint on the herbicide. That works really well. It's very direct. It only gets the herbicide exactly where I want it to. The problem is I'm walking through the woods, fighting branches and things like that, and the herbicide is dangling around at my waist. I'm worried about um, spilling it. So what we use currently for applying the herbicide to these cut stems is a just a, a handheld one gallon sprayer that we've modified to allow us to, to paint onto the, um, the stem or the, the trunk. And so we're going to talk a little bit about what, what we've done to do that and c to create that. It's a lot easier. It works out well for us. So the, what, what we use, we have these um, one-gallon sprayers that I buy at Rural King. Uh, it's like $8 for a one-gallon sprayer, so they're relatively cheap. We use a different sprayer for every herbicide that we use. So if we're using 20% glyphosate or 2% or 4% or we're using some broadleaf killer, they all have their own dedicated sprayer, so I'm not worrying about cross-contamination and I don't need to spend the time to, to clean it out. <clears throat> Cleaning out herbicide containers is always a, an environmental risk because you're rinsing out old herbicide and what do you do with that? So this way I've got a, a dedicated sprayer for each, each concentration and each herbicide that I use. And for eight bucks a shot, it's hard to beat that. So this is the sprayer. This is just like almost any other sprayer. And you don't have to get them at Rural King. Home Depot sells a very similar sprayer for like 10 bucks. Uh, that just happens to be the, the cheapest that I've found. So I don't want this to spray out as I'm applying it for the same reason I didn't want to use the spray bottle. When we're doing like 2% glyphosate and we're, spreading it, we're spraying it on small little herbaceous things that are weedy, we will use a sprayer, but what I'm worried about right now is cut stem. So I don't want this to spray out. So what I've done is taken, and I've, I've covered that up with a, a, 
uh, material that will absorb the herbicide and then I can dab it on with that little puff of material. So my technique here, I've got some heavy duty nylon material that I've cut into a, a three inch square. And then I took that three inch square and I've cut a circle out of it. Now my goal is I'm gonna take the sprayer and I'm going to put the fabric over the end of the sprayer so that it's not spraying out. Now if you look at this, this would not hold much herbicide. And I want it to hold enough that I can actually paint something with it. So what I need to do is I need some way to hold the herbicide inside of here. I've tried various things. Uh, most recently I tried, these are a little stack of discs that I cut from an air conditioning filter that I put in there. And you can imagine that that would hold a lot of herbicide in there and then it would uh, just seep out. I've also used sponges and other things. What I'm going to do for this one is I have this scrap that's left over from the square that I cut. I'm just going to wad that up into a ball and put that into the middle of my disc of nylon here and then push that all together. So you can imagine that's creating all sorts of voids in there that the herbicide can get caught up in and I can use for, for painting. I'm putting a hose clamp over the end of it. This is a number four hose clamp. It goes down to three-eighths of an inch. It goes between three-eighths and I think five-eighths of an inch. You could probably do, go with a slightly larger hose clamp if you wanted to, if your, your nozzle was a little bigger. So I push it on there. That's pushed up tight. I want to loosen it up a little bit so that I've recovered all those voids of my crumpled up fabric again. And then I'll tighten that up. So now, when I spray, when I pull the trigger on the sprayer, all it does is it saturates this fabric area. Once I have the fabric, fabric area um, saturated, then I can use that to paint onto the stump or the twigs or however that works out. So that's how we used what we have done for delivery. So the other modification I've made to make my life a little easier is I've added a shoulder strap. Now, when I see these for sale, I don't see them with shoulder straps. But they seem like they have these little ears on here, which in this case I've drilled out a hole and then attached the shoulder strap to it, which seems to make perfect sense to me. This shoulder strap is an old strap from some luggage that we had that we never used the shoulder straps on our luggage, so um, I've got actually a stack of them that I can use for uh, various sprayers. Um, you could get this, I'm sure you can buy a shoulder strap on Amazon. Uh, I, I know you can get them at the thrift stores and places like that because uh, they, they, people make them uh, for luggage and not everybody uses them. Um, so that works very well. So uh, then if you look on the side of this, I've added an S-hook, which I've bent the end of it, and then attached it to the, the, uh, the spray tube to create a place to hang the wand. On the end of the wand, I put another uh, cable tie, and it gives me a way that I can set that aside. So I can be working away, I can set that here, and I've got both hands free. So that works pretty well. The only problem I have now is that because it's it's not a backpack sprayer, a backpack sprayer would work fine too, but when you're working with such a concentrated um, herbicide, you don't really need a lot of it. So I don't want to carry more out there in the field than I have to. So I'll take this one gallon sprayer. I rarely will put more than a quart in it because I'm very, using very little herbicide in a very concentrated way. So I've got this hanging here. If I'm out uh, working with a chainsaw and I bend over, it tends to fall in front of me and get in the way. That can, that can be a, a nuisance. It can also be a, a bigger problem because this is all a pressurized tank and a pressurized tube. A few years ago I was out cutting something 
and I this slipped over and I nicked this this um, tube from the sprayer because it's pressurized that meant that glyphosate just sprayed out all over the place it was just really ugly <laughs> so I'm trying to avoid doing things like that so my solution is I took a carabiner this is just a really light duty aluminum carabiner I think I bought it at the dollar store three for a dollar or something like that and I clip it onto my back belt and then I hook the cable or the uh, the shoulder strap onto that carabiner so that allows it stays in place now I can bend over I can do whatever I want and that stays in a, a way that's uh, out of my way if I want to use it I can pick up my wand I put the wand back I'm cutting using the brush cutter using the saws it's out of the way I can pick it up do my spray and go on that's what I do and I spend a fair number of hours each day doing things like that so I want a system that works pretty well so there's the tool let's go out in the woods and I'll show you how to use it so we're out in the woods in an area that we haven't cleared yet this is Ammer honeysuckle I'm gonna show you what we do um, I cut it this is an electric chainsaw I love this electric chainsaw <laughs> I love the fact when I stop it, it just stops immediately. So, here we have the cut stem. There's actually three cut stems. And all I'm going to do is paint the herbicide around the edges of that. And there we go. You can see there's not a lot of overspray. It's just going to kill that honeysuckle. That's what we do for cut stem. I hope that's a useful thing. I hope it's a useful tool for you. Um, if you like the video, hit the like button. If you have comments, if this is, uh, this is going to be useful to you, if you have other ways of dealing with this, we'd love to have a conversation in the comment section. And of course, we'd love subscribers. Subscribers are what YouTube uses to, uh, to tell whether or not we're, we're valuable people and whether or not we, they should be uh, serving out our videos to other people. So, thanks for watching.